Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can go through this portal from one live action clip and seamlessly transition into a completely different clip through the portal. <laughs> now I was pretty much ready to call this portal series done last week, and then I thought, yeah, but what if you can, what if you could go through the portal? Because that's, that's what portals are for, right? Oh, okay. This can get a little bit complicated, so I made a motion graphic to kind of explain how it works. Let's start with our movie clips. We want to transition from the first clip to the second clip through a portal. So let's put in a portal there. As we learned last week, we're going to need to make a mask to make something look like it's inside the portal. And I'll show you how to make a black and white mask in a minute here. But even if we put all this together in the right order, there's still something a little bit off. Can you see it? The second clip has completely different camera motion from the first clip. This adds another layer of complexity. The fix I found is to put a 3D scene behind the portal at first when we're using the first clip's camera motion, and then once we go through the portal, transition to the second camera's motion. Alright, so we got five different elements here, and we're gonna have to bring these together in a way that actually <laughs> looks good. So, buckle up. <laughs> So I'm starting this tutorial breakdown thing assuming that you already know how to get up to this point. And if you don't know how to get to this point, I just made a whole bunch of tutorials on how to get to this point, so no pressure. Just uh, go back and watch those, and come back when you're done. If you don't want to go back and watch a whole bunch of tutorials, here's the recap. We tracked a bunch of footage, messed around in 3D space until we got something that looked half decent, and then we threw some fancy noodles together and called it a day. Okay, I'm gonna stop pontificating. Let's learn how to... All right, so here's our scene. We've got our shadow portal here, and if you remember, we've got it separated into two objects. There's this kind of inner cone and this outer cone, and they're both flowing in different directions. What we're gonna want is this inner cone here. I'm going to select it and then go Shift D to duplicate it, and we're gonna use this object as our mask. So I'm gonna right click, make sure it's in the exact same position, and I'm gonna go M and move it to a new collection. I'm just gonna call this mask. And once it's there, we're gonna wanna set this up on a completely different view layer. So if we go up here to this view layer, I've just named it portal. Let's hit this new page and add in a new view layer. We want to uncheck the portal collection. Okay, so now we've got our camera enabled just so we can see what's up. And we've also got this inner disc and we're gonna use this as our mask. Let's start by going into edit mode going into vertice select mode and going alt shift and selecting this outer ring. I'm gonna go E and then just scale that up a whole bunch. And you can tell that it's scaled up enough if you go to the start of the animation and you can't see the edges, which we cannot. So that's scaled up perfectly fine. Let's go control plus and that will select the inner ring here as well. And let's add in a new slot for a new material. Just gonna hit new and let's call this black. This principled shader is all right. Let's just change the base color to be black and then make sure that specular is down to zero. And then let's hit assign. Now if we take a look at this, the material isn't quite lining up with the inner ring here. And that's just because we have this subdivision surface modifier. I'm gonna delete that. And we've got a pretty good start here. Let's go back into edit mode, select this middle edge with once again, alt shift and left mouse button. I'm gonna go E and then Z, and then Z. And that will move it on its local Z axis, which will go behind it. Once that's behind it, I'm gonna hit F, and that'll just cap this off. Once again, I'm gonna go Control Plus, and that will select this loop here. If we look back at our material properties, I'm gonna add in a new slot. Let's call this white, and then we can switch this from a principled to an emission shader. Let's go assign once more, and we've got our black and white mask. You can see this animation is linked up with the actual animation of the portal, and that is excellent. Okay, get comfortable, because we're about to put together a 3D scene the likes of which will make the Matrix crew with the VFX people jealous. Okay, I gotta chill with 
with all this editing so it doesn't take all day, but here's what we're going to do. Let's drop in a marker with M where we want to transition from the 3D background to the original footage, and we just want to save out that particular frame of the original footage, and this is what we're going to use to project onto our 3D background. Then we're going to drop in a plane and match it to the background image. There's a nice road where we can transition from the flat ground to the vertical trees. Then right click and subdivide the heck out of it. You and let's go project from view. Nice. Now let's create an emission material for our plane and slap that frame grab on there as a texture. In the properties, I like to change it from repeat to clip just so it looks a little bit clearer. Now this looks pretty great except for the fact that there's giant black bars along the top and bottom when you go back a little ways in the animation. The top is easy to fix since it's just sky. We can just go back and edit the UVs a little bit. But for the bottom, let's go back a little ways and grab a frame for that. So we basically just need to create another material exactly the same way as we did the last one. Well, hold up, this texture is not lining up with these faces. The fix for that is just to hit K and use the knife tool and cut a line right along the texture. Then we can apply the second material to the black side. And by the way, the second material is projected from the exact same frame as we got the second frame grab, and we're using that second frame grab as the texture for it. Oh, oh look at this glorious background. Are you Matrix guys jealous? Let's talk about view layers. Now these things are notoriously tricky to wrap your mind around, so I figured I'd take a minute to explain them. Up in the corner here, we've got the list of view layers. We've added all of these. We've got the mask, and the 3D background, and the portal. Now if you take a look at these, they all have the exact same collections, but each one has different collections checked. The easiest way to think of it is to think, each view layer is a different configuration of enabled collections. So our camera is always enabled just so we can see it. But on the 3D background view layer, we pretty much only have the 3D background collection checked. The same with the portal. That's just the portal collection checked. And also with the mask. That's only got the mask collection checked. So we have three view layers with completely separate renderings on each one. Okay, let's talk about the compositing setup for this. I've got a fairly simple version here that I'll show you, and then a little bit more of a complex version, and I'll explain the details of this in a second, but let's start with this basic one. As you can see here, we've got all of our inputs, we've got our movie clip of the other side, we've got our movie clip of the first side, we've got our layer that's just the portal here, then we also have our mask up here, and we've got our 3D background. At the start here, you can kind of see we've got the secondary clip and the 3D background, and I'm running these through a switch node. This is animated. If you'll remember, we set up a marker before, and that's where the 3D background is exactly the same as the original footage. This is our 3D background, and this is our footage. This is when I've animated it to switch. So on this side of the marker, it's the 3D background, and then on this side, it switches to the movie clip. And it switches at the point where you're just about gone through the portal and you can't see the outside anymore. So you can't really tell that the camera movements are going to start acting differently. And that is going into the bottom of this mix node here. You can see that on the outside, we've got the snowy setting. And on the inside, we've got the grassy setting. It's just this movie clip here and the switch node. And they're mixed together with this black and white mask that we created. Now, if you're not sure, these nodes are actually render layer nodes, and you can just get them by going input and render layers, and you can change the view layer down here. So right now this is portal, but we can switch it to be mask, and we can see our mask, and we can switch it to 3D background, and then we've got our background. So that's what these big chunky boys are here. So we've got our switch and our movie clip, and they're mixed together by our mask. And that ends up with this. And then I'm just running that through a simple alpha over, and that just pastes our portal on top of everything. So that's the simple node setup, and it doesn't look too bad, but I figured we could bring it up a notch 
And if you watched the tutorial from a couple of weeks ago on how to integrate this portal into live action footage, you know something about the distortion nodes we're about to get into here. So you can see it's still pretty simple. We've just got our snowy scene and our switch node that's mixing between 3D background and the original background footage. And they're just going through these few distort nodes and then back into the mix node that is controlled by a mask. So there's nothing too crazy going on here. There is one more input. If we go down to the alpha, you can take a look here. We've got this wild black and white image and I've put it through a blur node and I've just blurred that by 100 on the X and 100 on the Y we get this crazy whirlpool effect. And this is going to several places right now. Let's just look at one of these little distort packages real quick. We've got the snowy movie clip coming through. It goes into this displace node. And then we've also got the blur node going into the vector. And I've set the displace scale to be 50 on X and 50 on Y. If we take a look at what's happening before and after, here's the before clip. And then here's the after clip. Everything is just kind of bent weirdly around where this crazy shadow portal is affecting it, which I really like. It's a really nice visual effect. Now going down the line after this displace node, we've got this in paint node and I've just set that to 90, just some really big arbitrary number. You can kind of see something that's a little bit black along here. And when you go to select the in paint node, you can see what's happened is Blender is just kind of filling in the gaps there and just extending out the frame so it doesn't look too crazy. Now coming off the back of that in paint node, We've got it going into a lens distortion, and I've just got the dispersion pegged on this. You can see everything's just really wild looking. And then that is going into a mix node, and that's just mixing the in paint with this crazy lens distortion using this blur effect again. So if we look at what that looks like at the end of the mix node, you can see there's some crazy warped color effects along the outside of the frame where our shadow portal is. And I've done this process twice, it's doing the exact same thing to the background footage. You can take a look here after the mix node. We've got this nice crazy warped looking thing going on here. And then all of that, like I mentioned before, just goes into a mix node and that's just using the mask. So the white parts are the background and the black parts are the foreground. Then that goes through to our alpha over again, just adds the shadowy portal on top of everything. Goes through some color balance to make it blue because I like the color blue <laughs> and then we get a tiny bit of lens distortion on top with a tiny bit of dispersion. And that's the shot. That's all the noodles. All right, well, thank you for sticking around to the end here. This one took a huge amount of work compared to the tutorials that I usually do. So if you wanted to subscribe or hit the like button, I'd really appreciate that. And hey, if you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, there's a link in the description that says five tips for integrating your CG into live action footage. It's a completely free video. It's my gift to you. So yeah, just think of that as kind of like a thank you for sticking around till the end here. But hey, it's about 11 o'clock p.m. here and that is past my bedtime. So I hope you have an excellent day or night and cheers.